have once found a treasure in a field. So Dolly had his love was real. He bought that field and he hid it there. He gave so much about the world he didn't care. Another guy was a merchant man. That was his plan. And when he found the one of great price, sold all he had, he bought it that same night. Jesus Christ, the treasure, the pearl, embraces love and his word. By the truth, be born again. Out with the There once was a rich man and a poor Poor Lazarus waited at his door The rich man found he couldn't care at all The dogs licked his sores, Lazarus ate the crumbs that fall The truth we found was more than the wealth the rich man had, cause now he was in hell. Jesus Christ, the treasure, the pearl, embraces love and his word by the truth. and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of the live stream broadcast for without spot or blemish ministry so glad you are here tonight it's 10 5 on a saturday september 9th and we're gonna talk today about money in these last days and we know that the value of the dollar has <laughs> sunk dramatically and we're gonna see some testimonies of people that have gone into different places and haven't been able to buy eggs for less than 11 dollars and uh, we got people like you see on the screen here asking for donations when they're billionaires and multimillionaires instead of uh, giving of their uh, loot that they've spooled up. And uh, it's created a whole uh, another divide and conquer between rich and poor. We've seen it between racial divides, between uh, sexual uh, proclivity divides. Uh, we've seen it on every level. And it's just being pushed more and more. And uh, we're obviously seeing this for a reason. It's also the fulfillment of prophecy. And there is a way for you to live a life of peace and joy during this time, protected of the Father. And uh, we're going to 
uh, seek to emulate that uh, and learn about that tonight. And we're going to end with the good news that you definitely can walk with the Father and know Him and have as much peace, love, and joy as uh, you've had um, all along. And uh, one of the reasons I believe that we're in this situation is to get us to learn to do what um, I'm doing here on the left, that is look up and trust the Father rather than trust in our, our careers and our money. Jesus said that you cannot serve God and mammon. And I think a lot of times in the church, we think that praying for our jobs and praying for some positive uh, wealth transference to us through uh, working a, a particular system that we've been taught to go to college, to earn money, um, to get corporate jobs, to to seek to uh, live lives, our lives as the Joneses in a competition with everyone else. We think that because we may have done well in that arena that we've been blessed by the Father, and that is definitely not always the case because a lot of times we're pulling our own strings, we're running our own show, and it was much of the time not about us seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and letting all these things being added to us. We were out there playing the game, and we were many times playing in Satan's arena, and now Satan... Satan's arena and Satan's minions, they're, they are shutting down the value of um, all currencies worldwide and running up the prices from their centralized purchase of their corporations that raise the prices first, and then it trickles down to local economies, and we have this incredible rate of inflation all over the Western world, indeed all over the world. And for me, this is on purpose, and it is a great transference of wealth from the middle and lower classes to the powers that be. And it's the way to tax people without them knowing it is through inflation. Well, most of us are, are, are waking up to this, and we know what's happening, but many don't. And we just go through our lives, and we just see that something is really wrong. And um, I'm here to tell you that in the scriptures— in Revelation, it's predicted that you wouldn't be able to buy more than a loaf of bread with a day's wages. and uh, But God put a special provision in there to hurt not the, quote, oil and the wine, which I believe are, are metaphors for us, for God's people that love him and keep his commandments. And we're going to go through all these scriptures to talk about that tonight. And I'm going to show you also how what we're having today with the homelessness, uh, the, the rioting on both sides, whether it was... Uh, the Black Lives Matter related riots or what happened on January 6th. A lot of this to me is all um, COINTELPRO. It's being done on purpose. And we have plenty of predictive programming in the movies that have come out in the last few years, starting with uh, Joker in uh, 2019. Not just there, but it started prior to that. All of these apocalyptic uh, video games and movies have predicted these outcomes of a dy dystopian society that we're beginning to see more and more, especially if you live in the larger cities, I'll show evidence of that. And we're going to talk that through and talk about what uh, the Father may be leading you to do to, A, protect you from getting caught up in situations of violence and, and homelessness yourself. We're going to talk about a scriptural basis for how to handle your money, how not to go into debt, how to try to get in a situation where you're not even paying rent, if it's possible, and learning to find a situation that is maybe a little beneath what you're accustomed to. Remembering that in all generations prior to the 20th century, the modern conveniences we have today are, are ridiculously luxurious compared to all generations prior and what they were able to live through uh, and uh, have a good go of it. And how maybe, just maybe, you might be in a situation where it might be wise for you to let go of certain luxuries and conveniences in order to get something that you can actually afford to live in and not owe the man and not have to pay rent at exorbitant amounts of over $2,000 a month for a one bedroom and being willing to live in places that other people don't want to live that is outside of cities and in rural areas where you can actually afford to do what I'm saying. And, uh, but some of us won't do that. Some of us are going to insist on holding on to, to uh, 
the luxuries of the past. And if we're not willing to release some of that, to um, embrace a lifestyle that's debt free and even rent free, and uh, where in places where we can actually grow our own food if, if necessary, or, or fish, or, or hunt, or whatever it is to feed ourselves, if we're not willing to put ourselves in that situation, I think that we break God's commandments and his laws with regard to going into debt. We're not supposed to be in debt. And I think rent is debt. Exorbitant rents put you in debt. That means you are working a certain amount of every month. Some of you work an entire week just to pay your rent, maybe even a week and a half to two weeks just to pay your rent. And that's putting you as a slave to the person you're paying the rent to for two weeks a month in which you're just working entirely to enrich that, your, your quote, landlord, which uh, that word right there tells you what that means. So it's somebody that lords over you, that controls whether you have a roof over your head or not. And so what I want to get to in the end is purposely endeavoring to get to a position where you can uh, live in a place where you aren't paying, at the very least, exorbitant rents, but you are able to afford where you live and people can't come take it from you. Now, I need to pray, but before we go forward, I do want to say one thing. In the end, by the time we can't buy or sell without the mark, we're going to be off hiding in the wilderness like the Hebrews did when they left Egypt and they were in the wilderness and they didn't own property or have um, a place other than their tents to lay their head. And I do will show you from the scriptures where that's predicted for God's people in the book of Revelation as well. It'll be the same thing then. But in the meantime, prior to that, as long as you can own any property, I would encourage you to own it outright and be willing to live in a trailer on a small patch of land in a rural area just to get to where no one can uh, come on you to pay rent. Now, you'll still have to pay taxes for that property. But generally speaking, the rural areas, the taxes on a small piece of property with, you know, a small a abode on it is not going to be prohibitive. So, all right, we are going to go forward with all that. We got a lot to talk about tonight, but before we do, let's pray. As always, Father, we praise you and thank you for being in this live stream tonight. I praise you and thank you for blessing those in the chat room and uh, those that will watch in the future. I thank you that n that no flesh will speak tonight, Father. I am asking you to minister to us your word tonight as to what we should be doing with our lives related to this um, economic, nearly apocalypse that we're seeing going on in the world. And I'm asking you to give us your wisdom, your guidance, your leadership, and um, also that one size doesn't necessarily fit all and that each person has to be led of you individually, Father. And I thank you that everybody watching would get an unction from the Holy Spirit and would be led of you tonight in regard to their own situations and leave this discussion brand new and in such a way where they can have confidence in you about the future, Father, and not um, confidence in the flesh or themselves or trust in governments and politicians and people to be their provision, but that we would learn to take this situation and put our eyes on you who said to not worry for tomorrow, who said to look at the lilies of the field they don't toil or spin, and yet they're arrayed better than Solomon was. How much more will the Father clothe us and feed us? And all of that, Father, we're asking you to move on our hearts to completely trust in you and, and these and all matters. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We bind up any demonic interference either here in the studio or with the listener. Um, I bind up the convolution of the word in my mouth or in the ears of the listener. I loose that the truth would be spoken and the truth received. All these things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. So I hear a fan that's blowing. I'm going to turn it off really quick. Just one second. I always seem to leave that on and don't hear it when I'm doing my pre-production. Okay, so this, not this. We need to get to the place, and the purpose of the tribulation period is to teach us to put our all of our trust in the Father, and He will still provide for us. And so real quickly, I'm just going to go to this scripture that prophesies um, what will happen in the end times in terms of the value of the dollar or the value of any currency 
Um, and it is in Revelation 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And, and I beheld and lo, a black horse. He that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Balances were used in um, weighing things for um, trade in those days. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now, most biblical scholars would say, you know, a penny to us sounds like it's almost worthless, but a, the penny in this um, case would mean a day's wages for enough to make a loaf of bread, essentially, is what this says. So it is predicting um, a severe um, upswing in, um, in the cost of things based on your labor per day. So I want to show you actually a video really quick. Um, let me go to that where you can see people already complaining about this. I want to make sure that do I have loop back on? Let's see if this will play. I want to make sure loop back is on. If it's not, I'll be in some trouble here. Let's look at right here. And sat in my truck and just cried. There we go. It's working. What the hell? Sam's club. What the Sorry hell? Everywhere. That. How is anyone affording to eat cool. right now? Sorry about this. I mean, because we're struggling to have enough money to feed us for the whole month. I have four kids plus myself, and we struggle to put food on the table. I shouldn't be struggling. We make enough money that I shouldn't be struggling. I live in Ontario, Canada, and I just paid $20 for a tiny little bag of grapes. The other day, I paid five bucks for two apples. Two apples was $5 at the grocery store. I just saw a carton of eggs for $10. Like, what? I don't understand it. Like, I don't know what's happening with our country, but it is rapidly declining. The cost of living is astronomical, and the federal government is absolutely crushing the middle class. I don't know how anybody, if, if you're making less than $100,000 a year here, um, I don't know how you're doing it. I think $100,000 can allow you to maybe pay your insane rent um, and your basic bills and necessities, and then you have $0 left over at the end of the day to like do anything. So basically, if you live in Canada, you live to work to pay bills and pay taxes, and that's basically it. So. Yeah, I want to leave and I don't know where to go. We can't afford our prescriptions. We can't afford insulin. We can't afford health care. We can't afford our education. It's just so frustrating that we did everything they told us to do. We went to school. We got educated. We worked hard. We did everything they told us to do. And then when we're actually out in the world, they want to charge us $1,800 for a one-bedroom apartment. So... We see the people are really starting to notice that this biblical prophecy is most definitely coming to pass. And they're making a lot of hay out of it because they're trying to do another divide between rich and poor. They want the poor very angry with the rich. And I'll show you in a minute that that's been a lot of the predictive programming of the movies and the video games and, and the like to create this divide to cause us to hate the rich. And the super rich, the one percenters, whatever you want to call them, the Illuminati, the ones that are the social controllers that are running all the uh, various nefarious um, economic groups, the World Economic Forum, um, the stuff that went on in Davos. Uh, we've got all of these different groups, the Trilateral Commission, all these things that people uh, attribute to being Illuminati, the One Percenters, the Rothschilds, the, the Bilderbergers, the, I mean, you name any name, the Vanderbilts, the, the Rockefellers, Fellers. I mean, all of these groups, they definitely are trying to create this division, this hatred. I think a lot of that was represented in the movies um, with the girl that shot the bow and arrow and why I never saw them very much. I saw some clips, but I know that was also represented too, that they had to hunt each other. And it was uh, basically games that the rich would watch. And uh, I think that they've been doing that actually for centuries, watching, creating wars, starting wars, funding both sides of wars to watch uh, the, the, what they consider the useless eaters kill themselves like chess pieces on a board. And it's very, very wicked. And they'll also, you know, play games in our parliaments and in our congresses where some politicians will act really upset about it. So watch this guy. In Dublin, five 
€109,000. You would need a salary of 150000 a year in order to get a mortgage on a property like that. And your affordable housing schemes are linked to a discount on that absolutely obscene price. In my area, average house prices €700,000. So a whole future generation of young people, working people, will never be able to own their own home and will be prey to the obscene rents that are being charged of €2,200. Never able to save, never able to aspire to own their own home, and you have failed them completely, and you won't even give them eligibility for social housing support. It's obscene. Average house prices... So that is truth right there. Um, What's interesting about that is I have a friend that's uh, just turned 30. His wife is also roughly the same age. And together they make about 140 grand a year. They cannot afford to buy a house. They don't qualify. Uh, They're paying $2,200 in rent every month, which means there's no way they can save up a 20%. Um, 20% to buy a house that's going to cost four to five hundred thousand dollars at least in a, in a major city. He said in his city uh, that there's a two no three story townhouse in his area where his apartment is. They're they're starting in the six fifties, so it's the same thing that's described there in Ireland. Here, the interest rates have skyrocketed, and when you see an interest rate go from two and a half percent to seven percent, that doesn't those numbers are so small, it doesn't sound like it's that great of an increase. But if you look at it over the life um, of the loan, when you're paying all the all the interest up front, it means thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars extra that you pay in interest uh, to to get a mortgage. So people are getting angry. And you could see that represented uh, in the the TikTok videos I just showed you. And here's Klaus Schwab the one that's attributed with the quote that you'll own nothing and like it, that it's going to become a society of renters that own nothing. This is him predicting an angrier world. The economy, which are not counted for, uh, who lose their jobs. So we will see definitely a lot of anger uh, already now, but probably increase by the end of the year uh, because this crisis will be with us until we really have found a remedy. So um, we have to prepare for a more angry world. And uh, how to prepare? Uh, It means to take the necessary action, to create a fairer world, um, to see that uh, we provide everybody with uh, decent access to the health system. Um, So he's talking about essentially social socialist communist solutions to these so-called problems that they help generate and also through everything that's happened in the last three years that I don't need to reference because you all know what I'm talking about. So all of that has been part of a greater scheme to create this anger and angry people. And it's really showing. And it's also, as I said, multiple times being represented in movies and uh, especially this movie Joker from 2019. So this is pre uh, the major event that's happened And this whole, in the movie, it's represented a lot of homelessness, a lot of poverty in the cities and um, people, especially white males, in this case, a white male that's been really neglected. And so he is brought in, he's already mentally ill. So being mentally ill, neglected, beaten up, trodden upon, he snaps. And I do think that's one thing they're trying to make happen is that through all of this, various levels of warfare that's happening against all groups, but in in this case against white males, they're trying to get the white male to where he's going to snap and he's going to, he's going to get very angry and break. And I think this next phase of what they're talking about doing in the next month, uh, which you guys know what I'm talking about, the, 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 the reoccurring of what already happened with as much as people know about all the lies we were told in the last phase of it, it's going to start a lot of people, disenfranchised people that lost their jobs because they weren't allowed to work for you know why and are angry to just start doing this sort of thing. And so this movie came out in 2019. And then we know um, as far as you know, what's represented here is rioting and looting and all of that. We know that this actually did happen 
um, in the future with the George Floyd riots, everything around the George Floyd uh, killing. And this actually, you would think that a lot of these photos were taken from that same movie. So all of it has been predictive programming come about. And it's not just on the left. It's not just with the BML, BLM. Remember what happened on January 6th. And of course, we know that there were infiltrators um, from the various alphabet soup agencies that were there stoking all of this. But that's the whole point. It's predictive programming and then self-fulfillment on their part. And you could see it represented on both of what you might call the left and the right, um, on both sides of the racial divide, on, on both sides of the the sexual pol politics divide. And you can see this divide and conquering methodologies that they've, that they're doing producing what happened in Joker and uh, very, very dark movie, by the way, extremely dark movie. I don't recommend anybody watching it, but I, I did watch it this week because it was free on Amazon prime. I went ahead and watched it and there was another movie uh, from 2022 on there called Samaritan. And it's a very dark, uh, just a cult movie as well. But what's interesting about this movie is it also represents a very dystopian world full of homelessness and crime in the streets and people running rampant. I have a friend that works in retail and uh, he said this week his store was robbed and the security caught the guy robbing the store. And on the way out, they basically persuaded him to give the items back, but they didn't call the cops or have him arrested. They, when he gave it back, they fist bumped him and let him go. And so you'll see in many cities throughout uh, our country that especially I've seen in LA or San Francisco that they allow for theft up to, I think it's like $954 or something um, without punishment. So that's why so many stores have been closed down in various, uh, uh, various cities in America, such as Walgreens in um, San Francisco. I've seen that that closed down several stores. Many, many stores have been closed down in these cities because of these laws that allow for this kind of um, theft and violence with no repercussions. And again, it's all predictive programming and these movies um, reinforce that. So why I'm sharing that with you is unless God leads you to, I would prefer not to live in a city such as that. And I would be seeking to remove myself to a smaller um, locale uh, with fewer people and um, to a place where I actually, if I had to live in a converted van on a one acre lot in the middle of the wilderness to live without rent or owing anybody anything. I personally, that's how I would do it. I'm going to show you another person in Kentucky that he's not Amish, but he lives that lifestyle that's done just that. We'll watch a video on that. But I think that the wisest thing to do as I'll show you in a minute from this guy's lifestyle is limit your exposure to all funnels. And what I mean by funnels is when we pay our bills, a lot of times companies try to get you in a monthly payment funnel so that you're giving them something every month. Try to extract yourself from as many funnels as possible so that you don't have anyone whom you're required to pay um, as, as a monthly debt to. Limit your exposure to that. Limit your exposure to rent and you can live a free life. And also limit your exposure to making too much money because in a socialistic communist society that uh, whatever you make a third to a half of that will be taken from you. So what's the point in working for the man? So this leads me to go to the scriptures where Jesus tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he'll add all these things to you. So many of us are caught up in working jobs for the man instead of seeking to obey the commandments and then being led of the Holy Spirit as to what to do to, to be provided for or to allow the father to provide for you. We are taking too much control over how our own um, finances go. And we're trying to be quote wise stewards as we've been taught in our schooling and whatnot. And we're taking way too much control over it. And I'm going to show you from the scripture, how 
that is really not what Jesus ever intended. So let's go to what he intended, which is really radical what he's saying. And I know for many of you, what I'm saying is radical. But Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. So he's basically telling you as well that you'll own nothing. Let me retract that. You will own things, but they don't need to be such treasures that you make them into idols. So the things that you do have, if they're lost, because there's a time to get and a time to lose, according to Ecclesiastes, it's not going to endanger your relationship with the Father. And you're not going to hold on to them so tight that you put them in the place of the father, and then you lose your relationship with him. So during this time where the dollar is becoming valueless and many of us will have to sell many of our assets in order to um, make ends meet and things will have to be given up until we're pretty light. And uh, in terms of our uh, possessions and Jesus was teaching, teaching that right from the beginning. But it's easy when someone in the Illuminati tells you that you'll own nothing and you'll like it to have a, a kickback in your spirit that says, no, 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 I'll own a lot of stuff and you won't take it from me out of my cold, dead hands. And I really believe that part of the multivariate reason for putting that statement out there, you'll own nothing and you'll like it, is to get believers like us to have that snapback. Like, how dare they? How dare they think they can take stuff from me? And they get us to competitively put ourselves in a covetous spirit where we have covetousness and a desire to own things where this world isn't even ours to begin with. And we want to snap back against them and fight back against them. But we need to forget all of their little um, sayings that are meant to anger us and remember what Jesus said and follow after him. It says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So I'm not saying you can't have a car, you can't own your property or a house, but I'm saying that your number one goal should be to not be in debt because the Bible makes clear that the debtor is the servant or the slave to the lender. And how can you be a servant to God if you're enslaved to some other person that's charging you usury and making you work double time for that one thing you wanted to own, but you were too impatient to wait on the father to bless you with it. So you bought it with debt and now you're going to pay twice the amount. Say you buy a car for 30 grand, you have a six year note now and you end up paying like 55, 60 grand for a 30 grand car because you had to have it and use debt to buy it when the Bible told you not to go into debt to begin with. So, so many of us are caught up in these, these fiscal and financial traps that they've laid for us by giving us things easily by us saying, I want this thing and you having no patience and you not being willing to ask the father for it and wait on him to bless you with it. And then you've got to have the newest, shiniest one. And you don't even, you buy a brand new car instead of a used car with cash, you buy a brand new one and suddenly you've got 72 month long, 86 month long notes now. I mean, 84 month long notes now and cars costing 60, 70 grand and you're, you're lashed to debt and you're, you are literally bound to the loan uh, giver, the loan provider, the bank that loans you, the finance company that loans you the money. You're bound and you're working for them. Your life is dedicated to them. But you put things, covetousness and things before the father because he didn't tell you to do that. And that's a trip, a trick and a snare of the enemy that you need to work to get out of. Jesus goes on. No, no man can serve two masters for either. He will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is money. You cannot serve both. And that's the problem, you know. We, many of us live our lives addicted to things, addicted to, to the narrative of what we think we should have, addicted to competition with our peers. Our peers have, su have such and such, so we should have such and such too. And we are so out of the spirit in that, well, when we're walking that, in that way. We are not walking in the Holy Spirit. We are walking in a worldly, covetous spirit. And 
that's what this time is for, for the whole of the body. This whole tribulation and this devaluation of money is meant first and foremost for us to get God's people trusting in the Father again for his provision. It's also meant to humble us, to get us to a place of repentance for our covetousness, our greed, and our willingness to go into debt to get things instead of trusting the Father. This is all the tribulation for is for correction. It says in the book of Isaiah that um, when God's judgments are in the earth, his people will learn righteousness. And these judgments, whether or not they're being instigated by the Illuminati's, whatever you want to call them, the powers that be driving inflation up, it's still God's using it to correct us and to get our hearts on the right thing. Jesus goes on, verse 25 of Matthew 6, Therefore I send you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall put on, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? How many of us have compromised and made deals with the devils, with devils to feed ourselves, to have roofs over our head? How many of us have compromised and done evil to get money and compromised our integrity, lied, cheated, cheated others? Or Jesus saying, You're, it's, it is out of our purview that we should even be worried about where these things are going to come from. He's telling us not even to think about it. Not even to think about it. And I'm telling you, I've seen time and time and time again in my life where I didn't think about it and out of nowhere, Somebody would lose a little weight, like my friend who gave me this shirt this week. He gave me several shirts, and he they're practically brand new. He lost a bunch of weight, and he couldn't wear them anymore. He's a smaller, shorter guy, um, and so he couldn't wear them anymore. And so out of nowhere, he gives me a, some really nice shirts, and I don't even need to go to the store for them. They're free. And I know that just seems random, and, you know, most people are too proud to receive stuff gifts like that from other people because they think, well, I'm, I've got the money to buy my own shirt. And they preclude the father from giving things into your life the easy way because he knows what you have need of. And you can worry, not worry, but you could put your energies into seeking ye first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will do all the providing for you. He will give you favor when favor is required from other people. And he will open doors right before you. But too many of us want to pull the strings our own way. We have to be in control. We're control freaks, which is a sign of narcissism. And we have to get out of that. We have to not be narcissistic with the Father when it comes to trusting Him. We need to trust Him as little children. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take, the thought, take thought for the things of itself, sufficient to the days the evil thereof. Well, he's speaking this to people that need to be out of debt. If you're in debt and you're in rent debt, which $2,200 a month is rent debt to the tune of uh, 20, what is that? $25,000 a year of rent. You're in debt 25 grand a year just to have a roof over your head if you're paying that much. And I know people that are. That's 25 grand. But... We have to be willing to go places and live places where we can actually have a small amount of money and buy an acre somewhere way out in the middle of nowhere and start planting your own food and work in a little garden, a little box garden if you have to. We have to be willing to do that if we're led. Now, I said at the very beginning of this, it's not a size one size fits all solution to this stuff. And God may lead you to stay in a city because he wants you to minister there or he has some other purpose for you there. But I'm telling you that in order not to worry for tomorrow, you cannot be in debt with other people because you're going to have to worry about how you're going to pay those people. And let me show you this video right now of this, this guy. <laughs> he's taking it to a, a great extreme, but watch how what he's done in order to stay out of debt. Let me go to this video. What oh, wrong one? This one. Watch this guy. 
he lives in Amish country and he dresses like he's Amish, but he's not part of an Amish church. But watch, watch what he's about to tell us. When I'm busy working outside, and so it's, it's real disorganized. Uh, You're a bachelor. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And my buddy is staying with me, too. I mean, look at what a wreck that is, but he doesn't care. And if you watch the rest of this video, it's called The Man With No Legal Identity uh, by Peter Santen Santanello. Um, that's on his channel, which I encourage you to go see this. Watch the whole thing. It was, I mean, it cheered me up a lot because this kid has a lot of faith in the father. And yeah, he's a dude living by himself. He's a wreck in here, but you wait till you see all the food that he's grown and all the work he's done outside. You know, one day I pray and he wants, he said he wants a wife. I pray he gets a wife one day that can help him straighten up in there and he can keep um, doing what he's doing. Um, he, he does need a helpmate. I'll tell you that. But, and you could see by what a wreck it is in there, but watch what he says about his bills. He's got some of his stuff stored here. Okay, uh, so you do a lot of canning of yeah, things? Yeah, I do some canning, yeah. This is the wood cook stove here, uh, which during the summertime I'm not using it uh, since it would get too hot in here. So you have no electricity in here? No, which it is wired for, like the electric was on when I bought it, but I, I've been here, this is the eighth summer, and I've, I've not, not had any electricity here. So why do you choose for no electricity? Well, uh, it gives me like a freedom to not have to be down to a grind of a, like a nine to five job. I don't have an internet bill. Uh, I don't have all these bills, you know, associated with that, with electricity. And so I can just just work a small amount, whatever I want to work, and, and then I have enough money to live. Okay, what are you doing? This is my point. This is my point. And I've personally done this to a much lesser degree in my own life. I've limited my exposure as much as possible. And I've been willing to live in situations that most people would find, um, I wouldn't say repulsive, but it would be less than um, adequate for most people. But once you learn to be like this cat and to go through some things that you think might cause suffering, but then you learn in the end it doesn't. And then you actually, it's pretty easy. And honestly, compared to the days of Jesus was walking the, walking the earth, he's got it really good. This is... Uh, this is completely doable. And this man is not a slave to anybody. And if he wanted power, he could get a couple. Um, if he got a little bit of money, he could get a couple of solar panels and uh, some batteries and he could get some uh, low, low grade electricity in there. Not too expensively, actually, but he's learned to live without it and he's fine. He's probably got some. I think that's an oil lamp in the back. He's got some other ways to resolve all that. And once you get used to things, it doesn't matter anymore. Doesn't matter work i train horses and shoe horses oh cool yeah. so what do you think your expenditures are how much money do you think you have to spend a month uh i guess probably my my two main bills would be like dog food and got, gotta like that guy is what he's got two bills and one's dog food come on now this is you see this guy's so cool my phone bill i've got a landline phone so, Landline, no cell phone. Yeah, no cell phone. Okay. Yeah. There's his dog. It's now. crazy. Like they wouldn't I didn't want the internet, but they wouldn't give me they wouldn't give me a phone without the internet. So I don't I'm paying for internet, but I don't get it. So I have a landline phone and that's like ninety dollars a month. Uh, and then dog food, I probably spend like twenty dollars a month on dog food or something. Things like salt, fruit and things like that, I probably spend like thirty dollars a month on that, probably. So ninety, twenty yeah. and thirty. Yeah. So 140 a month is your your mm -hmm. expenditures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always dreamed of having my own farm, my own land, and a dream finally came true. You love it? <laughs> I do. I wake up in the morning and there's a green hill on that side and a green hill on that side and I just have my own little peaceful valley here. So no car. Nope. You get around with carriage. Yep. So you're almost living an Amish lifestyle. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. But you're not at all. No, I'm not a member, no. I'm not, I'm not a member of the Amish church, but I pretty well live the lifestyle. Okay, so I think we've you've seen enough. Again, this is on Peter. Let me scroll up so you can see it. Peter Santanello's uh, page. This video has 10 million views. <laughs> I mean, and I'm sure that a lot of people like us are interested in, in how he's done this. Now, this guy has 50 acres. That's a lot of acreage. And... Uh, you know, he bought it at a pretty young age. I'm sure it's very remote. It's out in a rural area. It's in Amish country. And I think he's in Kentucky. Um, and he's 
limited his exposure to needing $140 a month. Now, many of you watching couldn't even imagine that that was all your bills, but the reason why I showed him to you, and I'm not even saying you need to take it to, to this quote extreme where you don't even have power, but you know, if you had a power bill and you had a small place like that, his power bill would probably be 80 to a hundred dollars a month. And he, he could easily, uh, uh, probably pay that if he shoot a few more horses, but I do the one thing that he can control. And the one thing that we can, tr can control if we're willing to downgrade from what society and the powers that be have led us to believe we, we absolutely need, which we don't need. If we're willing to accept what, what is an initially perceived to be a lesser, uh, a type of an abode, then we can um, get to a place where we're not enslaved to society. And I'm not saying that you have to go full bore and buy a 50 acre spread and do what this guy's done. Although I really truly do admire what he's done. And uh, you go watch the video and see just how much um, work he's done in terms of all the planting he's done and the expertise he's gleaned on how to grow herbs and food and whatnot. <sighs> But the other side of this discussion is if you're in ministry and the father wants you in a city and you don't stay there, then that's also wrong. Thinking about, about Jonah, who didn't want to go to Nineveh, ended up in the, the, way, the belly of a whale. You need to be where the father's leading you to be. And he, has a, he may have a purpose for your life. But at the same time, he may also be leading you to a place where you're not in debt and we're not supposed to be in debt. And if you can't do that in a city, a major city, because it's so expensive in the cities, then maybe he is leading you out of a city and into a place that's going to be less populated and less giving you less exposure to what may happen in the cities in the next year or two. In my view, the chances are much higher with what they're trying to, to uh, revisit and bring back again. I think that people are going to be way more on edge this time and those uh, that are on the side that aren't willing to uh, bow the knee, as it were, are going to be, that aren't uh, believers, are gonna be ready to fight. And I, I see the potential for many s skirmishes of a civil war based on all the divide and conquer routines that they've, they've um, run. I don't, I'm not saying like a worldwide civil war will happen, uh, but I do know that many small battles and skirmishes, I believe, will occur. Because they are purposely, again, they're purposely trying to drum all this up with their divine conquer routines. So, again, one size doesn't fit all. You need to be led of the Father as to what to do with your life, as what to do with regard to your finances. But again, if you're in debt, you were never supposed to be. That there was never God's intention. His intention is for you to ask Him what you, uh, your desire, and uh, if He agrees with it, He'll provide it. That doesn't mean that you can't have a job and you can't work, but if you're doing things to serve your covetousness rather than doing things to serve God, you've got the, you've got it backwards. You got the cart before the horse and you're trying to, again, pull the strings and run things your own way. And, and that's not how we're supposed to do it. We serve the father and we're supposed to be led of the father and, you know, I don't know about all uh, this guy's, all of his beliefs, but I do know that he has mastered the part of the word that says, don't go into debt and, uh, and, and seek the father. And, um, there are many things he said that brought me, my spirit, a lot of joy watching this video. So go check it out. Okay. So one thing that occurs when you live month to month, as many people uh, do in these expensive, exorbitant rent places, is if you do lose your job or if your wages are so stagnant, they can't um, compensate for the level of inflation, there might be a come a time where you get evicted. And these corporations that own all these properties and a lot of rental houses have been purchased up by corporations that do not really care about the people, they will happily evict you. And this is the homeless problem in Los Angeles now. It's amazing how tent cities have, have grown up there. Most of these are liberal bastions, by the way. 
And a lot of people say, well, most of these people are just all drug users, but that's not always the case. Some of these people have been made broke by losing their job and having lived hand to mouth and paycheck to paycheck in a, in a city where you could pay for one bedroom up to upwards of $3,500. This is New York City's homeless problem. I mean, trash everywhere. You're walking down the streets, you smell feces and urine and people can't afford to live. And they've gotten to where they're so broke and so messed up and many on drugs that if they, if they had just a small amount of money, say they could have saved up five or 10 grand and bought an acre way out in the wilderness somewhere, they can't get there. They're stuck. They're trapped. They're in, they're in a maze for which they cannot escape, especially if they've given into alcohol and drugs to numb their depression and their sadness. So again, we as believers, we got to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And if God leads us into these places, even to minister to the homeless, then we need to do that. And I'm not telling you to do anything to exclude your calling, but I am saying it's not for us to be in debt and we need to be in places where we're not in debt, where we're no longer slaves to the system. And personally, I don't want to make so much money where I'm paying such an incredible amount of taxes that I'm working three to four to five, six months a year to pay taxes. That means I'm working for someone else. That means I'm, I'm, I'm in debt to the government. So that's what I like about that kid's life. I mean, he hardly makes any money. None of it can really be taxed. It doesn't make enough to be taxed. I think up to 13,000 a year is, uh, if you make less than that, you don't even need to file. And that guy doesn't. And you say, well, Doug, that's just poverty. Is it really poverty if you only have $120 in expenses per year? If he's got $120 in expenses this year, a year and he makes $1,000 a month, do you think he's broke? Doesn't even have a car. Gets around with a horse. And he feeds the horse from the hay he grows in his own field. He's got a self providing environment that he's created that God helped him to create. And he will never be in this situation right here that you see now in Atlanta. In my state, the great state of Georgia, a state I love. I love the state of Georgia. And this is in Atlanta and there's plenty of homeless up there. Major city. Here's Chicago. I remember when I used to teach kids that spoke Spanish and they didn't know English and I said the name Chicago, they, uh, they started laughing. I said, why did you laugh? They said, because you said chipupu. They said Cago meant poo-poo and I didn't know that. So they started laughing. I don't know why I even bring that up, but there's a lot of poo-poo on the ground and these homeless places, they don't have a place to go to the bathroom and they're living on the streets. Just like movies like the Joker predicted and all these apocalyptic television shows and video games predicted. Predictive programming. Here's Dallas, Texas. A place for which you would never think. I, I lived in Dallas for 14 years. And when I was there in the 90s and the early 2000s, the even, uh, well, I left in 08. But prior to that, there was so much money in that area. It was ridiculous. Everybody had a job. I, I used to ride the bus into town through through some of these areas into downtown, like right there where they're staying under these overpasses. I want to say that's on the northeast side of the city. Um, probably I-30 is running over right there. If that's where it is, I used to drive under, ride under there all the time on my bike into downtown to go to work or on a bus, and I never saw homeless people there. So all this is coming to pass. It's definitely within control of the bankers uh, because they flooded. They flooded the market with what they called quantitative easing. And they flooded the market with dollar after dollar. And the, the more dollars there are, the less valuable they are. They created the inflation on their own. And then all these giant corporations uh, like Home Depot, Kroger, uh, Publix, Lowe's, the places where you go and buy stuff, Target, Walmart, the, all that's so centralized. If they raise the prices in those major corporations where we shop, even Amazon, 
then that's going to have a trickle effect to local economies and you get what we have today. A valueless dollar and people barely able to, um, to live. And then you get the situation, which I sort of alluded to at the beginning. Let me put up my presentation. You get this situation where the whole deal with Maui, I don't know, I'm sure many of you know about what happened with the Maui fires and you had um, Oprah, Winf Oprah Winfrey and Dwayne The Rock Johnson begging people for donations. So I had here on this little meme, if Oprah and The Rock, a billionaire and a multimillionaire, have the guts to ask you for donations for Maui, you can go ask that girl out. A friend of mine said this to me. Like, if they have the guts to do this, you can ask a girl out and be willing to receive rejection. Like, this is, again, pitting the rich against the poor. And look at this reaction from this girl. I think it's on, uh, she did this on TikTok. I saw this on the Jimmy Dore show. Let me play this for you. Donation. If you send a donation. Just click now. Did I? Okay. Oh, it's shit. so sad. So if How you many... send a donation. Wow. Yeah. Just click now. Did I just witness what I think I witnessed? Please don't tell me I just saw a billionaire standing next to a multi-millionaire begging the average everyday citizen for donations that can barely get by due to a real life recession, living paycheck to paycheck, barely can pay rent, barely can put food on the table for our families, okay? Living in a real life recession in a country where our president is giving away all our resources, mm -hmm. sources, and resources of to another country for money. If you two don't go take your Hollywood elite behind to your other <laughs> Hollywood elite friends and politician buddies that got millions like you do in billions and get all that money together and help out Maui, you are out your damn mind. That's Please right. don't insult our intelligence like that. And after you guys do all of that, you will have enough money to help the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Boo. <laughs> out of here with that. The nerve. <laughs> Boo. Yeah, the, the amount of time. I mean, right? Is she wrong? And that's the whole thing. And in this movie, in this movie here, the Joker, it pitted him versus um, Bruce Wayne's dad, who was running for mayor and he represented the rich. And in the movie, they made him seem like such an awful human being that was disrespectful of all those that weren't rich like him or hadn't achieved what he had achieved. And this so, so this whole movie, the basis of this whole movie is pitting the rich against the poor and. That's also represented the other movie that I watched um, Sylvester Stallone do called The Samaritan. And uh, here's this movie that the that was also there. So I don't watch a lot of modern movies um, because, uh, you know, I know what they're made to do. But again, the predictive programming can't be ignored. So watch this from the um, official trailer. Another long night of crime and violence. Some say it's only a matter of time before the city implodes. I think so, we're finished. Again, it's showing this dystopian situation, crime, violence, rioting, all of that. And again, I showed you that was reflected in the BLM riots, the January 6th riots. They, 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 they present it and they, they drum it up on both sides um, on purpose. Be, it is all I've been talking about this on this channel for years. Go back and, and look. I was talking about this in 2016 and 17 and 18 that what they were doing. And it, I feel in my own spirit that this is really coming to fruition. Now the divide and conquer routines um, versus vax versus unvaxed uh, LGBTQ alphabet city versus straight. And, and, and conservative and religious um, races versus races. The division is on socioeconomic levels. It's on every single level. And um, like Gary says here, they are drumming up chaos. Yes. And that's the, that's the whole point. And all the predictive programming shows that. And they've been predicting predictive programming this for, for years. And, um, it's just, it's just, it's really amazing how to a head that it's really coming at this point. Um, so predictive programming talked about 
Um, all of this is coming to pass now. And what I see in people that have a strong work ethic that are younger, that saw and were taught by their parents and by school, that if you work really hard, you will get what many people in here in the States call the American dream. The, the, the house with a white picket fence, 2.5 kids, a dog, and two cars, and a country club membership. And these, like I said about my, my friend that's in his early 30s that's struggling for this when both he and his wife have pretty decent jobs and it's not achievable at any level. And they are on struggle street and they're fighting for what once was, but will never be again. Not to live in a major city and to be able to afford it uh, without having not just a six figure job talking about getting closer to 200 grand a year to be able to afford to live in a city and actually have a comfortable life. It's just not available anymore. Yeah, it's, uh, we've, we've, I feel like we've gone into the part of the scriptures where there's no going back now. Like that's what I, I could be wrong about that, but in my spirit, I feel like there's no going back. Now is the time to take and take, take your life into stock. See if you've been, uh, economically covetous and if you've made decisions that have put yourself in a precarious situation where you're in debt and you have to continue making a certain amount of money on the hamster wheel of slavery to, to quote the man and you can't serve God in the way he wants you to. If you're in that situation, I want to, I'm going to pray for you later. I'm asking you to seek the father as to what to do so that you can get to the place of deliverance in your life that in these last days you can actually be a light to others because people right now are hurting. I don't know if you noticed that the video I showed earlier, I wish I hadn't closed the page, but I, could, I should probably pull it back up. But the girl that was in Canada, there are so many Canadians that are really suffering because I mean, the draconian measures that their quote prime minister has taken it's just been horrible. And the prices that have gone up, they, they, they are really struggling to make ends meet up there. And many of those people need to hear the gospel. They've been precluded from hearing it. Uh, it's, I feel like in Canada that preaching the gospel has been something that they've at the very least bristled at. But I think now, people in this situation that are really struggling and see, and they're starting to be awakened to what's really going on, will be able to receive the gospel, not just in Canada, but all over the face of the earth. And that's what this time is for to cause again, as I said before, to cause believers to seek out to, to get their lives right, to do things the biblical way, to get in line with the commandments to seek the father, to learn to trust in him and to learn righteousness again, because most of Christianity has subjected itself to incredible amounts of covetousness. And one way you know that is how so many people that call themselves believers fell lock, stock and barrel for the prosperity gospel movement. And all they wanted was a Joel Olstein self-help to be a better business person to be more friendly so you can convince people to buy your item or to give you a good job, you know, self-help Christianity. And they you they tried to use God in in a in a opposite way. They tried to use God to get things the way they wanted to get things, to control how they got things, instead of seeking you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and letting God be their provision. They did it all backwards and they, they did, did it against the way God said to do it. And they tried to use God to get the thing they wanted in the way they wanted through covetousness. Instead of trusting the father to be your provision. So we've talked a lot about this dystopian world. It seems that we're entering in that, that perhaps there's no turning back. If we're entering into the tribulation. Tribulation 
according to the scriptures, in my view, is a seven-year period. Three and a half years uh, into it, the Antichrist takes power. You can no longer buy or sell without the mark of the beast, Revelation chapter 13. But during that time, there's a proviso for God's people. Some of us will be beheaded and others of us will be sent into the wilderness. Verse 14 of chapter 12 of Revelation and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So the Antichrist is going to make great war against the saints and those of us that don't pay, take the mark of the beast. Some of us will be beheaded and others of us will be in the wilderness. And what that means, one size doesn't fit all. What that means for all of us will be hidden is what it really means. Some of us may be in the woods somewhere or in the mountains or in a desert place or hold up in some building somewhere that nobody checks on. You know, you just never know what that means for each and every individual. But we do know that during that time when we can't buy or sell, we're going to have to trust the father for provision exactly as the Hebrew people trusted God in the wilderness when he provided them manna in the way. And here was uh, when they didn't have food, when God had led through Moses and Aaron, he led the Hebrew people out into the wilderness. They all began to complain bitterly. In verse uh, 3 of chapter 16 of Exodus, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and we did eat bread to the full, for we have brought, you, you have brought us forth in the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And so there will be some people that will take the mark of the beast because they're going to be complaining and murmuring just like these people. And they're going to choose to take the mark so that they can get at food and luxurious living arrangements. And they are going to end up serving the Antichrist and the beast system and Satan himself because they wouldn't trust God the Father. And they never learned prior to this moment of the time where you can't buy or sell without the mark. They never learned prior to this moment to trust in God for his provision because they always did it their way and they always lived lives of covetousness and it'll be covetousness that causes them to take the mark of the beast. So this is what God said to them when they complained. He then said the Lord unto Moses, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. So that's the entire purpose of the tribulation. Remember, Isaiah said that God, uh, when God's judgments are on the earth, his people will learn righteousness. What is righteousness? Whether we will walk in his law or not. And that's the correction, once again, that we need to receive, that we are not doing things our own way through covetousness, through uh, uh, integrity, uh, lacking theft and trickery and tomfoolery to get people's money through uh, bad business practices so that we can be rich through usury and interest, which is forbidden by the Bible as well. Bad business practices. So let's say you're a car salesman or a house salesman or someone that sells mortgages and you're selling someone some incredible, incredible interest rate. That's actually forbidden to do by the Torah, particularly to other believers. So they were being proved in the desert, whether they would walk in his law or no, and we're going to be proved in the wilderness, according to Revelation uh, chapter 12, whether we will walk in God's law or no. That's the whole purpose of all of this. So those of us that will trust the father and let us let him lead us into our proverbial or, or in reality wilderness we are going to have to trust him for his provision during that time. And it says here, and the serpent cast out of his mouth a water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what the woman who's being sent into the wilderness represents. Those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ and keep the commandments. We also saw in the wilderness that God said he was going to prove whether they would walk in his law or no. That was a type and shadow of now. 
It's the same thing. Footstep says it's a serious time for testing to see if we really love the Lord. Exactly. Because a lot of us have honored him with our lips, but our hearts have been far from him because we cared more about the, the manna, the filthy lucre, than we did about the Father. Gary says there, uh, these riches will come to naught, and they are coming to naught. Literally, a loaf of bread for a day's labor is what it's going to come down to if you're participating in commerce. So I encourage you, and I'm going to pray with you here in a second. I really, truly encourage you to seek the Father as to... Whoops, sorry about that. Seek the Father as to what you should do with regard to your finances, how you can get out of debt, how you can find a place. Seek Him to help you find a place where you're not uh, in debt in terms of rents, where you are no longer subjecting yourself to these exorbitant rents that you can't afford, that you can't serve God and still, um, and still have these exorbitant amount of rents. It truly is time for us to figure out what's next in our lives, in my view, in, in this, in this sense, for me personally, this has been a huge year of change for me. Many things have gone down in my life. That's made me really focus on this. Like, what are my next steps? How can I ensure that I don't become enslaved to the system again, whereby I don't have free time to not only to do ministry and help other people, but just to walk with the father in the cool of the day, like Adam and Eve did in the garden before the system got rocked. One of the benefits of walking with the father and knowing Jesus Christ is that you don't have to worry for tomorrow and that he's going to look after you. How many of us are actually allowing him to do that? And how many of us are too scared to let go of the reins to allow him to do that? How many of us are praying through these matters and actually being led of him? How many of us haven't practiced enough deliverance to get the voices of the enemy out of our heads? Jesus himself had to cast Satan out of his life. You know, after his temptation in the wilderness, he told Satan to get behind him. How many of us are doing that to make sure we're not being misled by the enemy? How many of us are searching ourselves and asking God, to show us what we need to repent of. How many of us are in the word enough and have read through the word enough to know what the father wants from us? How many of us are, are, are ignorant of his laws and his commandments? Willie Will says, ain't nothing wrong with preparing with food, housing, protection, and PM. What would PM mean? As long as you're willing to let them go when the time comes. I agree with that. If God's leading you to do it, then do it. Donna says there's homeless in Alaska too. Yeah, they're everywhere now. Gary says there's drumming up chaos uh, with this heiress strain, the heiress of the Greek goddess of cast and strife. I saw that. That's true. Footsteps says it would be so nice if the Lord made someone win the lottery and help people. Yeah, but would he use gambling to help people? You know, when he sent the apostles out in the, in the 70 out, he sent them out with absolutely nothing to help people. A lot of people, a lot of people do think, and I was one of them, that you need a lot of money to go out and do your thing. I think God wants you to go out and do it, and he provides for you as you do it. Because when the apostles in the 70 came back, he asked them, did you lack anything when you went out? And they said nothing. So I think that's an, another thing to consider. Got footstep from Canada and Toronto. Yeah. Back in the day in Toronto, I visited there. It was probably the cleanest city I've ever been to, but I wonder if there's homeless people there now. Gear says they're slowly getting rid of Bibles. Yeah. Yeah, so I just truly appreciate all the people that were here tonight and will watch in the future, but I want to I wanna pray with anybody watching now um, and ask the Father in Jesus' my name to lead this prayer. Father God, we just come before you in the mighty name of Jesus and we're seeking to be people that reach up or reach our hands up to you in service to you and, and receive your provision and do what your Holy Spirit is leading us to do first and foremost by keeping your commandments so that we can receive the Holy Spirit so that we can be led of you and not be people that serve money and worship money and put money and covetousness before you father and having things as being more important than serving you. And so 
we just give you all the praise and glory for leading each and every one of us in our lives to get out of states of covetousness. And many times that it's proven that we've been covetous by the debt we have because we weren't patient enough to ask you to provide it for us. And we went to the enemy to get debt. So Father, I'm asking you for all of us that have been in debt, which I used to be in quite a bit of debt, and it was a hard road to hoe to get out of it, Father, but you helped me. And I'm asking you to help everyone that's repenting for being in debt to get out of debt and to also find a way to limit their exposure to expenses that cause them to be enslaved to this world and teach us to rely on you in such a way that when it does, when the time does come where we can't buy or sell without the mark, that we'll already be ready for that because we'll have already been trusting in you, Father. I praise you and thank you in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus for helping many of us to do that, Father God, to come out of the darkness of covetousness and greed and debt and enslavement and into the light of a person that's free in Christ being free indeed. And I most of all thank you for leading each and every person watching now or in the future as to what that means for them because we know one size in this way doesn't fit all. I'm asking you to speak to the hearts of everybody that's repentant and committed to keeping your commandments as to what they should do with their lives and from an economic perspective and how they can be free. As free as that, that young man that we showed on the video that lives in the mountains of Appalachia in Kentucky. I just praise you and thank you for that for all of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Just so grateful for all of y'all being here. Footsteps, Gary. Um, Willie, um, happy girl. She says she watched the documentary. He is an amazing person, really loves the Lord and people. I totally agree with that. I don't know if he's got some messed up doctrines from being around the Amish thing, but he's, he's separated from them. He just dresses like they do. And I don't see anything wrong with that. That's fine. Thank you, Janae. Good to see you. Praise the Lord for this live. Oh my goodness. I would love to live low key off the grid in such a way. I think that we should be working that problem right now for some reason. I feel like all of us should be at least attempting to limit our exposure. I mean, not all of us can get to where he is at the moment, but doing it step by step, you know, eat an elephant one, one um, bite at a time. And one way, one place you can start with that is just limiting your exposure to being in monthly payment funnels like I mean, just some examples. You guys probably don't have this, but Netflix and and all these monthly billable things that people get into and these music things. And suddenly if you're being charged 100 to $200 a month for things you don't even use, get rid of all of that. Uh, start to figure out how to use less power. Start to figure out how to um, limit your exposure to cable. Like why even have cable now? Like I haven't had cable in years. Cut the cut the cord. All I have is internet now. Try to figure out ways to get a lower uh, phone bill. Work on limiting your bills. If you've got debts, go after those. Pay off the smallest one first, then the next bigger one, the next bigger one. I know that's Dave Ramsey stuff, and I know he's gone way off the rails. But his initial stuff on how to get out of debt, I really liked. And go after your debts. And take care of that and start to limit your exposure. Um, if you, it's hard to find lesser rent for anything now. You're, it's gonna, if you've been living in a place for a while and you have a, you might have a lower rent than if you try to move out and, and where you live and get a lower rent now, you're, there, it's, you're not gonna find a more competitive price probably than where you are. But if you're able to get to a place where you can get outside of a city and get a small piece of property or a much cheaper rent to where you can save up the money to, um, start doing something like that on your own. Also, if you have other like-minded people that are trying to do the same thing, you might be able to pool your money together. I'm not telling you to join a cult or start a cult. I'm not saying that, but it's something even I've considered is pooling money together. So you can buy uh, more acreage with multiple people. And I'm not saying all live in the same spot and eat all your meals together, but get your separate abodes on that property that you all collectively own. That's something to consider with people that you can really trust. You know, um, there's, there's a lot of ways to skin this cat and starting with the small things that you can do right now and helping to limit your exposure, learning ways to 
instead of buying pre pre-made food and processed food, start trying to make your own meals from scratch. Um, like I've been buying, I've been trying to buy uh, flour and uh, trying to buy, you know, healthy flour, not the bleached and all that. And I've been making my own things in a pan. It's not like exactly a pancake because it doesn't have a lot of sweetener in it. But I've been like, I'll tell you what I've been making. It's really cheap in the end. I put raisins and some walnuts, the flour, some pow, uh, protein powder. I know it's probably going to sound nasty to you guys. I love it though. And I just put those things together and some water on it. No eggs, none of that. And the protein powder is really good protein powder. And then I slap it in a pan, flip it over. It's kind of like a pancake. It's doesn't have any butter in it or anything unhealthy. And it really fills me up and it tastes great. And it's somewhat healthy. You know, I'm not entirely gluten-free, but it's really the only gluten I get. So it doesn't seem to bother me. So that's pretty cheap. If you make things yourself rather than buying prepared things. And I know that I am only hitting the tip of the iceberg beans and rice, rice and beans. Like Dave Ramsey used to say, I've, I've done that before where I've just eaten beans and rice for an entire month. And I actually felt like I got, uh, my health improved doing that. I wouldn't do it forever, but I did it for about a month before. And, um, beans and rice actually produces amino acids and proteins that rice on its own doesn't do. And beans don't do on their own, but when you combine them and so people think, well, beans and rice, that's poor people food. And yeah, it is, but it's, Poor people food, but it's also very healthy and very good for you, especially if you can buy organic, which isn't always organic. So you're kind of, you're like playing the lottery, trying to buy organic these days. So just try to figure out ways to start to little by little lessen your exposure, especially to debt and especially to rent and get rid of the debts first and then try to get your exposure to rent taken away. There's a lot of people, I know you don't want to do this, but there's a lot of people living with their parents and their parents actually want them to live with them because their parents are getting older and they need some help. And, you know, back in the day, families actually did all this. They stuck together. Or if the kids at 16 in an agrarian society, pre 20th century, would they'd get married at 16 and they'd build their little house on the same property and they'd all support one another. And they'd be there for each other. And parents weren't farmed off to nursing homes. But some of us can consolidate that way. Or our parents have a property with enough grounds that you could build a small something on. And live there. And it's sad that the enemy has sowed so much seed of division in families that that's almost impossible for most families to do these days. Because everybody's at each other's throats. And Jesus also said he didn't come to bring peace, but a sword and that parents would be against children and, and brother against brother and people would be against each other. Why? Because they, people either serve God through Jesus Christ, serve the father through Jesus Christ, or they serve Satan. And now that line of demarcation between the goats and the sheep is becoming so um, apparent and evident that the separation is becoming so apparent and evident that people just can't work together that don't share similar um, devotion to the Father. Because if you're not devoted to the Father, you're devoted to Satan. And that's why there's so much division in families. But ideally, you know, Jesus said, who are my mother and my brethren? But they that hear the word of God and do it. And perhaps you can find a family. You know, God said he'd put us together in families that already have some property that you could put whatever your abode is, whether it's a fifth wheel, a trailer, a converted van, whatever it is. I know that sounds crazy, but whatever it is so that you don't have to pay rent. And if you're still working and making some money, you could save that up and slowly graduate your circumstances to the next level. But if we're truly at the doorstep of the tribulation, this time period of the first three and a half years won't be very long anyway before we can't even own property and we'll be on the run according to what we just read in revelation chapter 12. So the deal for me right now, stay out of debt, try not to get into rent and slavery and use the time that you have to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and let God be your 
provision and he will provide and I know this to be true because I've been walking this walk since 2018 just doing ministry and yeah I've had side jobs I've mowed people's grass before or I've taught somebody tennis or my dad used to pay me to help him out before he died uh if I helped him out um he'd pay me by the hour like everybody everybody else he paid sometimes and so yeah I made a little money but it wasn't me seeking to make money as much as it was people would just ask me and then and then that door would open and then I would do that little bit of work and it's kind of like that guy uh, that we watched on the video who just chewed horses and trained horses uh, when people asked him but he didn't really necessarily have to do it it was more of a blessing to be able to do it and it gave him a little extra spending money and so I encourage you to see that video again um, it's on Peter Santinello's channel and it's the channel that's the video that's actually featured on his homepage so you can't miss it so I've already prayed with everybody and just want to thank everybody for being here if you like the music here on this channel free downloads at the Reverb Nation link below you can listen to the music uh, anytime you want on the YouTube playlist please check out our backup channels um, this video right now that you're watching will populate to BitChute and um, also to Rumble in Odyssey and they're supposed to automatically and they don't always populate there. I think if they're more than two hours, they won't do it automatically. But at any rate, go check out those channels. Please subscribe on them. I can be a lot more honest on those channels uh, as you know, I used a lot of cloak language tonight that I wouldn't have to use over there. And if you'd like to help the ministry out, you can do so at the PayPal link below. Nobody's required to do it. And if God leads you to do it and it's a blessing for you to do it, then you could do it. And I say that's the way it should be with all ministries that feed into your life if if you are joyful to help out and help different uh, ministers create more or have, have God use them to create more content then help them out whoever it is that you're being fed by so I want to thank everybody for joining in and we will see you on the next broadcast for Without Spot or Blemish Ministry see you next time They think they're getting away with it They think that you don't see What they've done to your body They rob, kill and destroy They take without fear All that which we hold so dear But they won't see it coming they won't know The moment you bring them down so low They'll even deny That it's your mighty end When out of the beds they won't stand They won't stand They won't stand. Jezebel's judgment day, it has arrived Deny repentance, they all die Jesus gave us so much space, but she wouldn't turn The fullness of the judgment so well learned They won't see it coming they won't know The moment you bring them down so low They'll even deny That it's your mighty end When out of their beds they won't stand They won't stand they won't stand, stand, they won't stand. No, they won't.
Out of the beds they won't sell. 